Alright folks, welcome to Two Guys and Some Horror. Tonight, Santa's coming to slay through Christmas, and we also got New Year's Evil ready to bring us into the new year. Curtis, why don't you start things off for us? So, these movies, I think, are critically acclaimed good, both of them. Yeah. I don't think either of them uh, really have a bad rap, and I think that's a really great way kind of to end this season. Right. Um, to end the year, to, to kick us off into the new year. Um, there aren't a lot of really good New Year's horror films, so I'm really glad that we did New Year's Evil. Um, I hope that you guys really enjoy our conversation about it. We're really going to pick these, these two movies apart. Um, and as for Silent Night, Deadly Night, this, this is probably now one of my top favorites. So we did Black Christmas not too long ago, Krampus, uh, Gremlins, Silent Night, Deadly Night is right up there. And I would say is probably better than some of those films. I feel like the the one drawback that Silent Night Deadly Night has is the amount of buildup that they 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 do to get you to the point where the killing starts to happen. Yeah, that's that's probably a very brutal part about that film is that it takes it's almost like forty minutes before Santa snaps. Well, the right at the beginning you see a uh, you see Santa snap. I meant the Santa. Oh, the Santa. Because I finally like. There's a part where I was like, yes, finally, Santa's flipped his switch, and we're actually going to get into this movie. Finally. It's only an hour and 19 minutes long, too, which isn't a very long movie. Right. And the fact that it takes 40 minutes of this movie to really get into it kind of stinks. Well, they wanted you to like the character. They wanted you to like who the murderer was. And, and spoiler, guys, you know the killer is the entire movie. Uh, they, they showcase his, his hard past. They show, like, his... His parents brutally get murdered in front of him. His mom is almost raped by Santa. And then Santa says, where are you, are you little shit? Yes. He's yeah. hiding in the weeds off the freeway side. Um, so if you can't tell, we are talking about Silent Night, Deadly Night first. Um, the tagline for this movie is, he knows when you've been naughty. Um, which I find really good. I think both these movies have great taglines, so I'll probably say the other one when we get to it. Um... But yeah, so to, to get us back on track, like Clark was saying, um, the beginning of the movie, we're all, they go off to visit Grandpa, who lives in an insane asylum, basically, and he hasn't spoken in, they say, years. They don't really give a timeline on it. Um, they say he's gotten worse. They, they say he's, he's gotten catatonic. worse all the time. Possibly dementia setting in, something like that. They think that he might snap at any moment. But guess what? Stay here, Billy. Stay here with Grandpa. And we're going to go ahead and leave you here alone with him. For God knows how long. So Santa, yeah, so his his grandpa scares the shit out of him is what he does. He just says, hey, Santa's going to punish you because you've been naughty. Yeah, his his grandpa really gets a little spooky there. Uh, very creepy. And then he pretends to be catatonic again once the parents come as in. As soon as the parents walk back in. And that's when they decide to head home because um, Billy is now freaking out. Do you think Grandpa's just been sitting there waiting just to fuck around with children about Santa Claus around Christmas time? He's like, I, <laughs> that, it was like a two-year plan. He's like, I really want to fuck up my grandson. It's a long con. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm curious about that a lot of times when it comes to um, adults in general. You know, you never know if someone's just playing or someone's being serious. Um, those kinds of jokes can go too far sometimes and maybe this was grandpa's joke and it went way too far but the family is greeted on the highway with a real killer santa claus um so there's a man who performed a robbery at a gas station who then uh pretends to be broken down on the side of the road the family pulls up um who can it be santa claus rolling in a kilo g and then basically kills the father Shoots him just point blank in the window. Well, Santa's been going on a killing spree before then. Like, he's just the gas station attendant. Yeah, he, he, the father's like, "Hey, come, come see Santa." And the kid's like, "I don't want to see Santa. He's gonna punish me." Kid's already terrified of Santa Claus, and then Santa, Santa just shoots the dad. It's, it's terror. It's so unlucky, dude. So unlucky. That, I feel, I feel for that kid. And then is he tears his mom's shirt off and is about to rape her, and then he just kills her instead because she's fighting. Yeah. I mean, probably the the most, I don't know, uh, you didn't need that scene, that part of the scene, I guess. Ripping the top open really doesn't do anything for the scene, so well, there, I guess it shows how ridiculous the, the killer is. Yeah. Did you mention his little brother? Not yet. So the kid who's lucid enough to see and understand what's going on, or 
I guess he forgot about everything at some point. He was so young that the memories didn't completely form. Mm -hmm. But his brother's like an infant. So it's between him and his brother. And after this point, they're put in an orphanage. Yep. They get st they get sent to a it's got to be a Catholic monastery type orphanage, right? Yeah, it was a uh, an abbey. Um, That's probably the most accurate description. Yeah, I don't I don't know how to that. really explain. I haven't it. heard that term in a long time. It's definitely a Catholic uh, type or orphanage, and uh, there's there's two nuns that that are the main focus of this monastery or, or abbey or whatever you want to call it, the orphanage. One is Mother Superior, who is a complete monster of a woman who believes that punishment through physical means and like discipline is what the children really need. And then you have Sister Margaret, who uh, is the, the kind-hearted nurse who's like, go out and have fun, play with these other children. And there's kind of a dichotomy, um, but the kid gets... You know, he's basically in trouble because he's drawing pictures of a mutilated Santa Claus. And yeah, I mean, I had I had high hopes that he would reform. Yeah. Um, and that he would just get, you know, antagonized by another Santa. Right? That was yeah, kind of yeah, my hope. I was, I was hoping that too, but... Um, but instead, he's still haunted by these nightmares every day. Yeah. Um, and he's being groomed by someone who is really the villain of this film, like you're yeah. kind of alluding to, Mother Superior. Yeah. Um, I honestly feel and like she is the true villain. I, I was actually, yeah, I know I agreed with you. I, I said that to you uh, earlier too. Yeah, but uh, so he doesn't. Billy doesn't reform. No, he has horrifying images. He draws these images of people being murdered by Santa Claus. Um, basically, scares all his classmates and gets in trouble with Mother Superior again. Gets sent to his room. Well, Sister Margaret even says, she's like, the violence is still in him. Right. He needs, like, he, the kid needs therapy, and then... Well, he needs an outlet. Yeah, Mother Superior's like, I don't I don't care. And then she, instead, she, like, tries to force him to sit on Santa's lap, and the kid punches Santa and knocks him oh, out. Oh, man, yeah, before that... I don't, I don't remember the exact order of events. I can't remember if that's before or after when he catches the two banging in the room. It's right. It's that same time. It's that same scene, stretch of I, scenes. I think it may be right after, actually, because so she puts him in his room, and then sister, sister because Margaret he punches, looks, he yeah. punched Santa. I think it's because he punched Santa, and then Sister Margaret like takes him out, and he sees the kids. I'm not, I'm not sure about this either because I might be wrong. But he sees the, these two teenagers having sex in a room. And Sister Margaret's like, did you see what happened? Did you know what they were doing? And he's like, no, I don't know what they're doing. I'm no, Mother child. Superior. No, She's Mother like, Superior. They were doing naughty things, evil things, things that they need to be punished for. That's so, like, let's be honest. They're just having sex. So she's the one who got into his head that oh, so bad on. people need to be punished. Yeah. So we have, we, we can kind of understand... Like, what, what the director's trying to tell you here is, this is why he does what he does, and you can kind of follow it when when he when things happen on later down the road. But anyhow, moving towards the future, the kid's 18 years old, he goes to the store, and there's there's some there's some conversation, so but he gets Margaret's a job. Sister Margaret's trying to find him a job, which he gets. but the store owner's like, we don't want kids working here. Yeah, little he, did he know that it's like Bill, little Billy's grown up to be big Billy. This big Billy, studded, you know, he's a strong young man. He's he's massive. Like, he's ready to get to work. He's he's ready to lift one guy. He can lift you up with one <laughs> arm. He's strong. Uh, so what the hell was with the music in the movie? Because oh, like, right then when he gets hired, it's a like, yeah, go. <laughs> it's so. I, I'm thinking. I'm trying to remember in my head, right? I'm, I'm watching it. I couldn't remember when the movie was made, so I looked it up, and it's the '70s. It was a 1980s Folgers commercial. It, it, and I was wrong. It is the '80s. So I wrote '70s. It is '80s. You're correct. It's the '80s Folgers song, but the the <laughs> song that's playing is "It's Always Christmas on the Warm Side of the Door" or something like that. Like that's the exact lyrics, but I can't remember the freaking how think... it went, but. Always Christmas on the warm side of the door. I think back then, like they still tried to sell soundtracks with uh, with the movie as well. It's like you don't make as much money on just the movie; you make more money from the merchandising. And Fair so, enough. But it wasn't know. like it was Kenny Rogers singing it. It's it was bad enough to where I thought it might be. <laughs> Shots fired, Kenny Rogers. What are you gonna do? So I thought for sure that he was gonna get the job as being Santa at the store at first, but no, he's just a store clerk. So his job is basically to pick stuff up, the store, move yeah. it around. 
and he's got some a-hole of a boss who's just sitting there sipping booze all day. Well, his senior coworker, and he's just he, and he's like, you see him shaking his head now, and he's got his water, his milk, his milk. He's yeah. got his milk, because you got to drink your milk back in the 1980s. Uh, and his boss looks at him, and he's lifting the box, and he's just like nodding his head in approval, like that type of uh, commercial-ish thing. And then it moves towards it being Christmas time. And his boss, the a-hole guy, is mm-hmm. giving him that guff. Yeah. So Billy's suffering from Santa Claus flashbacks. Right. Throughout this time. Um, he's also suffering through flashbacks with sex throughout this time. Oh, he's thinking about having sex I with mean, his coworker. I mean, the really screwed this kid up. Well, it shows him thinking it's... about having sex with his coworker, and then he's, like, huddled in the corner, and he's yeah. like, please don't punish me, please yeah. don't punish me. I had a note. Just, like, it's not, it's not Billy's fault at all, because these... The nuns, Sister uh, Sister Margaret tried to help him. Mother Superior pushed him further into the darkness, in my opinion. And now it's like, wonderful. What's going to happen next in this movie? He's, he's working at a, a grocery store kind of a thing, like a, a retail shop. And it's Christmas time. And guess what? The guy who was playing Santa Clark, he got sick. He can't be Santa anymore. So what yeah. do you think is going to happen in the movie? Well, obviously, like she goes up to the boss and she tries to make him Santa, and he's like, "No, we're gonna make we're gonna make Billy yep. Santa." So now it's being he's being thrust into this position. You think he, he has would to say, be Santa. "You think he would say no instead of wearing that outfit?" And then he has the kid sitting on his lap, and he's like, "You're being naughty. Oh, you're gonna God. be punished. Stop it. You're being naughty." And <laughs> he does a fine job as Santa up until the point where his boss starts giving him alcohol. Yeah, so the Christmas party, right? Yeah. That's basically what they're having. It's not a real Christmas party, but it's as good as it's going to get probably for them. By the time we're through, you'll think you are Santa. And guess what? He snaps, finally. Well, not yet. It's close to it. He, they, they, he, they get him drunk, and then he sees the coworker he's been fantasizing about, the one that they've been showing like him sleeping with in these, these kind of weird, artsy scenes. Mm-hmm. He sees her go in the back with his coworker or boss guy. We'll just call him rapist for now. The rapist. Yeah, anyhow, they they go back and he he makes the decision to go back there and check up on on them and then he sees the guy trying to have sex with her. And I think he, he the way he kills him, like he wraps him around, he wraps light bulbs around him and then he picks him up uh-huh. with one arm and he just lifts him right off the ground. He was a wee little man. Yeah. Billy was a big, strong man. Billy was... No, and he just, stro- he just kills him. And then <laughs> Pamela, she looks over and she's freaking out and he's like, Pamela, Pamela, don't be silly. I I, I think at this so point... So she's he's, freaking out. I think he's still kind of there, but when she starts freaking out, that's when he just kind of snaps. Yeah. Because that's when he starts thinking, okay, I'm Santa. And he's like, you must be punished. And he stabs her with like a box cutter. Yeah. And he that... rips her sternum just vertically. Yeah, and he, he keeps that box cutter. He puts it in. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. would you get rid of your murder weapon? I, uh, well, it's, uh, th- this is just a note for later. Because it's just creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so, first kill, rapist, hung by Christmas lights. Second kill is the... I said innocent girl, but I know that you have kind of a different opinion, right? Because you said she... You didn't feel like she was really... You're talking about innocent. Pamela? Yeah. I don't, I'm not saying she's not innocent, but she was freaking out, which... I don't know. Like, at this moment, this is where he he descends into madness. Him killing the rapist, I don't care. That one... No. Yeah. That I'm fine with. I like, think every viewer watching this is like, yeah, totally kill that guy. But the girl, I mean, yeah, she was freaking out, but she had a right to freak out. He killed a dude. Yeah, but she's like, you're crazy, you're crazy. And she, she should have just left. Should've just she left. should have left. Should have just left. She's clearly Should have called shock. the police. Yeah, well. I, 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 I agree. Yeah. I'm just saying, I wrote down innocent girl. I wanted to hear your opinion a little bit more on how not, innocent she was. She's not not innocent. She yeah. was not asking for it. The guy who, who was trying to rape her definitely deserved to die. Billy should not have killed her. Uh, but Billy snaps and he... He stabs her with a box cutter, and no, like, Billy's 100% in the wrong here. Like, like there's there's no cutting corners there. So right around um, this time, um, Sister Margaret calls the store, or calls, yeah, she calls looking yeah. for Billy. And they're like, well, Billy's no longer in the stock room. Billy's was, playing Santa. That was before. That was before here. And she, okay. So she's on her way there. Yes, because she gets kind of this, this yeah. switch flips in her head, and she's like, oh, shit. Billy's about to kill some people or something bad's going to happen. 
I need to get there and make sure Billy's okay. I think she was just worried about him. She's like, yeah. they're making Billy be Santa. Oh, I need to see what's going on here. Yes. And then they find out about the murders, uh-huh. and she's like, oh, shit. Yeah. So she is the sympathetic character. She's the character that we as the audience relate to. Like, we're sympathizing with her for Billy until Billy snaps. Like, at this point in the movie, I'm like, am I supposed to not like Billy? Or what am I supposed to do? Right. Because he, he kills... I think the least deserving person in the room was his boss's, uh, whoever whoever his second in command that lady was. What do I have her here? A uh, lady who works at the store. Yeah. That's all I got. Like, she didn't really have a big part. She was just there to hang out. So he kills his boss. Yep. He kills her. We'll call her Mrs. Randall. Mrs. Randall. Uh, Mr. Sims, the boss. Yeah. And Mrs. Randall, the store clerk. Well, they're both... They're both gone. I forgot how she dies. Oh, she I... gets shot in the back with an arrow, dude. It's oh, right, pretty gnarly. Right, right. She's, she's trying to run out the store, and he just... I can't remember exactly if he does a bow and arrow, or if he just throws the arrow, or what, but an arrow just right in her back. I don't know. I don't think they show... They show him holding it, but they don't show him shooting. Dead. No. Ugh. Yep. So that this is where he begins his actual... You Descent. Know, massacre the, well, the every the murdering the murder spree begins here like he doesn't stop you you would think okay so someone's going to survive here no none of the characters you're introduced to at the store he just moves on you're introduced to a bunch of random characters that he kills uh yep so we move to the house mm-hmm. let's let's uh because i've got the kills listed so that way we don't i, I want to talk about the little girl okay too. so like this house so we go to the house. Um, it's a girl babysitting a young girl, and she has her boyfriend over. The boyfriend looks like Johnny from The Karate Kid. I looked him up. He's not. But he is in Footloose. Not important. So <laughs> Johnny lookalike and Chick, they're having sex or whatever, and uh, she realizes the dog outside needs to be let in, so she goes to the back door. Who opens a door stark naked? Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, Santa she put her shorts back on. Did Santa stab her with an axe at this point? Uh, how does she get it? She, she, she's naked pretty no, much she this gets entire... the antlers. She's naked. Oh, yeah, he picks her up and he just puts her on an antlers like a meat hook. Yeah. Yeah, this guy's strong. And... I, I just I just don't understand who who answers the door topless. But anyways, so... I so... mean, she wasn't looking for anything. I, neighborhood, just random. I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, yeah. Whatever happens, happens. This is a movie. I'm going to tell you this. She's making out with her boyfriend, babysitting her girl completely nude. So what are you, you going to expect from her? I wasn't upset. On a pool table. How dare you? And her, the girl's looking down, seeing this happen, and she's like, ah. I, uh, I'm not upset that she showed her breasts. I'm just upset that she opened the door. I'm, I'm annoyed at at the, you know what, I don't, I don't, Santa, good job. I like gratuitous amounts of boobs, okay? I, well, most people do. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, so, they're so, dead. <laughs> so, they die. But he the, gets... The, the way he gets killed is he gets thrown out the window. Yeah. Which is pretty... That's pretty hardcore. This guy's just strong. And then he's, we get to your favorite part, though. So, this part just creeped me out. He, he's pulling out a box cutter, and this little girl's like, Santa? And he's like, hey, little girl. Have you been nice or naughty? And she answers him honestly. Good. She's like, you sure you haven't done anything naughty? Oh, no, Santa, I've been good. And he gives her the box cutter that he... he just her very gift. creepily gives her this box cutter. <laughs> that he ripped open and the he, other chick with. Oh, just, man. Oh. And now the police know that there's a killer, killer Santa on the loose. At this point, yep. The and cops are on to him. They understand that something's going on. So moving through this a bit qu- more quickly... Um, he makes his way. The police are like, oh, we don't know where he's going. The sister's like, I know where he's going. And he's heading towards the orphanage. Which, oh, you're going to skip when the you... cops bust the wrong dad? Oh, shoot. Yeah, man. That's important. So the dad, the dad's sneaking into his kid's room to surprise him for Christmas to pretend to be Santa. And the cops see him going up the ladder into the room. So they bust in the door, run upstairs, point their guns at him. And they're like, freeze. And the dad turns around and the little girl goes, daddy? And then that's pretty much it. That's all. But I just thought it was really funny. Well, that, what that's about how... the guy who's right outside the orphanage dressed as Santa? And the police just shoot. Oh, man. <laughs> the two friends that sneak out to go sledding. You're skipping a lot of kills here. Yeah, there, there's some good kills, but we, uh, we got, we're we almost 30 I know, minutes in. I know. I know. Um, 
I prepared everyone that this could be a longer episode because I, I thoroughly enjoy both these movies. Yeah, so well I get so on the sled scene, like these two kids come up to steal sled from another bunch of kids. And you and that's the best quote in the movie. Yeah, okay. Are you are you having a religious experience or did you pee your pants? Like that's what he asked his buddy because he's freaking out about yeah. a noise in the bushes. Well that kid has some good insults. He calls the other guys dumb and they're like, You take that back. I'm bigger than you. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's yeah. it's like the shitty bully from The Simpsons, right? Yeah. Mil, well, uh, Milhouse? No. Is it Milhouse? I don't remember. No, it's not Milhouse. You're talking about Nelson. Nelson. Um, so that kid's coming down on a sled, and Santa chops his head off, and the kid's, like, screaming. You see this body on this dismembered head fly down, then you hear a... And you see, like, a head fall down. Yes, probably the best kill in the movie, to be yeah. fair. Okay. Yeah. So that's all. That's the honor. We'll do that one. That's fine. Uh, and then, then we go to the orphanage, and you have basically Santa showing up to a bunch of kids that are playing outside, and we're all led to believe that that man is Billy. Right. Like right now, as far as we all know, that's Billy. What watching this though during the moment, you're like, this is not Billy. The no. Police, the way know. he walked, the the like everything about his demeanor, he didn't seem like a killer. Or a man going to kill people. Eh. And Bill, I don't know. But these cops just see him from a distance and they don't even care. They don't stop to see if it's him or not. They just jump out of the car and they just start shooting. And then well, you flash back to the nurse and then she's like, they just killed the wrong son. And she's like, that's this guy. He's deaf. He couldn't have heard them. Yep. Just, it's just terrible. It's a bad moment. It's a... Uh, I don't even know, in police? 84, how bad was police brutality type stuff? The police don't look good in this movie at all. Okay. They don't look good at all. Because I get echoes of, like, Tales from the Hood, which is an anthology about those times when cops and, and uh, you know, people just argued a lot, and there was all that drama in L.A. Right. But anyways, that's, that's why I was curious. In 84, I don't know how bad the times were with people and cops, but they definitely poke a little bit... You know, of the bear mm. saying cops don't, cops don't do their job right, kind of a thing, which is, you know, a little, it's a little, that's, uh, ooh, gotta you be know. careful there. Guess what? It wasn't Billy. It was that deaf kid. It was a deaf man. Uh, <sighs> so the Billy, uh, the the nurses like the police are there, kind of protecting, making sure nobody's gonna come inside the orphanage. Mm-hmm. And who's at the front door? It's Santa Claus. And the little kid sees Santa, and he's like, I'm gonna let him in. So he lets in Billy, and Billy sees the nurse. And by the way, his catchphrase in, phrase in this as the killer is just punish. So he picks up his axe, and he says punish. And he's about to kill Mother Superior, but then the police shoot him, and he falls down on the ground, misses Mother Superior. And the villain lives on. The villain, the true, the true, yeah, the true enemy of the movie lives on and then it does a close-up on his brother yes and it plays like the horror music Ding. so now you're safe now santa is dead so this is probably room for the sequel which is a uh, very popular bad movie yep silent night deadly night 2 it's on the list for next year yep we're gonna get to it i promise we will be here next year don't you worry. garbage day garbage day oh man i can't wait uh Okay, quick recap of the final kills that we skipped. Deputy gets an axe to the stomach because yep. he wasn't paying attention. A poor snowman then gets an axe to the stomach. That poor snowman. And then Billy was shot by the detective. So that sums up Silent Night, Deadly Night from 1984. Um, like I said, we really enjoyed it. Um, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 is going to be on the list for next year. So keep on the lookout. And uh, Clark, what's your rating on this? Silent Night, Deadly Night? Yeah. Uh I'm not going to give it a number. I'm going to give it... This was worth watching. This was... Uh, it was a good film. I've never had a movie focus on the killer for the first 40 minutes and then just kind of be like, this is why he's doing it. I mean, yeah, I did a great job doing that. I, I feel they did a good... Yeah, it was a good movie. Sweet. Okay, well, in that... With that being done, we're going to move on to the next film. Second film of the week, which is New Year's Evil. And the tagline is, A Celebration of the Macabre. Um, don't dare, gosh darn it, IMDb, I can't see all that. Don't dare make New Year's resolutions unless you plan to live. That's pretty I bad. Love, I love that. 
Yeah, that that scene was creepy as shit. We're, in the dumpster. Yeah, there was a there's a dumpster scene. We'll get there. Um. Anyhow. Well, here we go. I uh. I want to just comment on this movie real quick. There, it it felt like there was a huge political uh, movement behind it. I felt like this was kind of backed by the Reagan esque era of uh, rock music's the devil type because they they're they're playing music of this this show and it's it's like a New Year's Eve party. And they're like, oh, you guys are all evil. The police are treating them like garbage. This is and, another... Okay, yeah. why do we always have these weird paired movies where we didn't mean for it to, but we're getting this once again, the people versus the police again. We're getting those moments where right. you have that tension. We well, didn't do this on purpose. This the, isn't... the police were dicks, completely. Um, but that, that's in most horror movies. You're always going to yeah. have that asshole police officer. I, I don't think you're going to find any horror movie where the police officers are all good even even slither like the main one of the main characters was a police officer yes like there's always someone who's inept there's always somebody who just is overly opinionated but anyhow moving on all right so the opening of this movie is blaze or by her other character name in the movie diane sullivan who are you looking for? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It's uh, played by Roz Kelly. So, Diane Sullivan, who goes by Blaze, it's her celebrity name. Right. Um, is getting ready for this party, for the New Year's Eve party. Right. And she makes a comment, which is officially my favorite quote of this movie, which is, do me a favor and drop a load and relax. She's telling her stage manager or whatever to calm the F down. Like, he's just way too high strung for her. He's probably done too many lines of coke. But... That's how, that's how basically this movie starts. She's getting her makeup done. She's getting all ready to go for the New Year's Eve party. And it's a really awesome looking 80s themed New Year's Eve party with a live band. Extremely 80s. Yeah. Her stage manager, by the way, is a very attractive lady. Uh, yeah. I was talking about the dude. Oh. Uh, you are talking about Yvonne? Yvonne, yeah. Yeah, I was very talking about the dude. Lady. Not her. Um, but go ahead. I just Continue. no. Tell I was just I was just saying she was a very attractive lady. That's all. Like, am I not allowed to admire someone? You can admire her up until she's gone from this movie because she only lasts for roughly, based on my notes, about five minutes. Five or ten. Yeah. No, she's gone pretty quickly. She she goes in the shower and then just shows like they don't show the killer here, but every other scene they show the killer. So she gets grabbed from behind with a shower curtain and suffocated. Yeah. We got cellophane two here. No. Cellophane two. Well, she's no. not wrapped in cellophane, getting moved back and forth with somebody going. <laughs> Flashback to a previous episode, Black Christmas. If you want to go check it out, cellophane makes an appearance there for the first time. Um, but yeah, so so we're getting this awesome music. Tickets, 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 please. Uh, people going in. You got the punk rockers. Definitely, and these are real good bands too. Some of them are pretty decent bands. Like okay. this is. This movie was basically made for a soundtrack, I feel. Okay. I mean, I don't know any of these bands. Um, not going to lie. It's familiar music to me. Sweet. 80s, 80s rock music. Uh, but they're not like massive, massive. Right. But you'd hear it. You'd recognize it if you heard it. Yeah. Uh, so we get them going in. They're basically the punk rockers. They're all right. ready to go and party. Cut back upstairs. Derek's coming to see his mom. He brings her flowers. Mm -hmm. she completely ignores him um and you know i mean at that moment the note i have written down is derek's the killer like i called it right there her son yeah derek the son he's gonna be the killer that was my note so they make you think that and I, i just felt like it was just too on the nose and then they mentioned the boyfriend how he's too coked up i'm like if they're mentioning if they mention someone if they mention a character generally they make an appearance in the movie Sure. And we hadn't seen him at all. Oh, you're talking about so, the dad. Yeah, so her husband. Boyfriend, and so I was husband, like, yeah. it's probably, at this point, I'm like, it's probably her boyfriend. It's probably her husband. Because, uh, anyhow, as the movie progresses, she uh, she gets this phone call from a guy who calls himself Evil. And he's using a voice changer. They show his oh face. Oh my god, and that voice changer is so good. Yeah. Um, and he says... I'm going to kill... I'm going to change, and I'm going to finally kill someone at the stroke of midnight. But he's already killed someone before it was New Year's New Year's Day. But technically, it was New Year's Day somewhere else. 
if you want to be technical, but he didn't do it on the dot for the hour like he but did for did every he? other kill. Is he the one who killed Yvonne? Well, he's... Yeah. He even admits it. The guy on the phone? He shows up later and she's like, you killed her? And he says, yeah. So this is something at the end... he tells her why. When we get to the end, because obviously there's a reveal here that we don't want right, to right. do just yet. We will spoil it, but not just yet. But here's my thing. That kill happened so early on in the movie. Right. And then there are so many other kills that happen away from where Yvonne was killed that I'm 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 a little confused about well, who killed who. We'll talk about this later. Um so okay. put a put a pin in put it. Put a pin in it. We'll come back. Anyhow. That's for you, Jordan. So the guy so she gets the call and then cut away to the sanitarium. And there's a gentleman sneaking inside. We're presented with a guy who says he's from the county. He's there to help for the night because they're so busy. Um, and the young gal believes him. And I don't remember... Was it a sanatorium or was it a, was it it's a, a hospital? It's a, a crazy... Looney bin? It's a loony it's bin. It's a loony bin? Yeah. Well, I, he, oh yeah, wine and special occasions. He brought her some wine he did. for special occasions. And she brings out the paper cups. It's so funny how fast she's willing to go into a dark room with this guy. Yeah. I, I'm a little... If that was an 80s, like, trope, I'm, uh, I'm glad we're in the 2000, almost 2020s now, because women need to be way more careful. You can't be going into dark rooms with guys you just met who snuck into your building. Well, she even says that. She says, I, you know what, I don't know, I haven't known you, I've only known you for 10 minutes, and he's like... Here's a bottle that... of champagne, and she changes her mind. And, no, 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 this is after, and she's like, and he's oh. like, is that a problem? She's like, tonight it's not. Exactly. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the killer's M.O., he murders her, and then he cuts, like, leaves a slit on the breast to kind of show, hey, I'm a serial killer. Uh, basically, he leaves the, his mark. Go to the police, and Blaze complains to them, and she's like, I got this really creepy call, I'm worried about it, and the police are like, you know, you guys create a problem, then you complain. Yeah, the cops are so shitty in this movie. Like, they're no help. And when he says you create a problem, it's like the whole... Rock, rock is evil, uh, kind of old Christian movement from like the 1970s where this is an early, kiss. this is 1980. So the 1970s, late 1970s is most likely when it was filmed. So I think you've nailed, you hit the nail right on the head with the whole rock is evil movement, worshiping the devil, whatever, where the cops and the Christians were all kind of against that music and that's that style of living and it's just it's so wrong in so many ways but we're not gonna we can't go too far down into that this this show will turn into something else well, well moving down the road like she finds out her friend yvonne or whoever yvonne is she finds out she's dead and then she's there's Derek, and he's like mom there's something you need to know and his mom just like completely blows him off because of everything that's happening yep and then yeah and then he decides to pop pills and that's when i wrote I guess I'm wrong on who the killer is. Yep. Because well, I thought he was committing suicide. He was taking pill. He, well, he put... He, what did he put on his head? Uh, pantyhose? Pantyhose, yeah. He puts pantyhose on his face, takes a pill, and then he drinks some alcohol, and he... Yeah, I thought he was trying to kill himself. No, he was just being weird. Uh, so they're trying to make you think he's the killer here. Yes, and I'm like, they are. It's, it's not him, because he's here the whole time. And, I have another Well, you know theory. it's not him because they, they show the killer. They show exactly who it is doing the murders. And there's like you're like, okay, so there's no way it can be him. Outside of the hotel. We, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Because so I thought about that So at this point, too. I'm like, I'm tired of these music cuts. Please stop doing them. Because I think this is like the third or fourth time we've got the live band playing music. The punk rockers are rocking out. And it's just like... It's, the, it's for it's the like, album. I know, but I don't know if it's the copy yeah. that I had, but it wasn't good. It wasn't in tune. It, it, oh, it sounded some terrible. Of the, some of the music in this movie is not that great. Some I mean, I watched okay. it on YouTube. Yeah. So oh, that probably oh, didn't help. It's on Prime. Is it really? It's on Prime. Oh. I didn't look. I just Googled watch it online and it was there. Well, now our audience knows that you pirate movies. How do you, how do you feel about YouTube's that? YouTube's not pirating. <laughs> if it's on YouTube, it's there. What, am I supposed to close my <laughs> eyes and pretend like it's not there? I uh, first of all, I pay for Amazon Prime. I pay for Hulu. I play for sh uh, pay for Shutter. I pay for Disney Plus. I pay for all the you subscriptions. Paid for, you I've, paid for Shutter. I do. You may be the only person in the United States who is a uh, an actual Shutter 
uh, customer. Do you know how much horror is on there? Probably enough. Probably enough. Too much. I can't watch all of it. <laughs> so, um, anyways. But anyhow. So she, uh, I think, I think we got some of this kind of mixed up and, and what happens, but anyhow, when he, when they're, every time you see the killer, I want to go back to when he's killing this nurse. Every okay. time you see him stab her, cause it's New Year's Eve somewhere, there's a kazoo sound. He stabs. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't make note of that, but you're it's right. It's kind of weird. Well, the, it's celebrating the new year and he's yeah. also recording them. Right, because you see him punch the record button on his little tape right. player. And that's um, when the police are like, oh, he's murdering someone at midnight. In each, each time, time zone. zone. Yeah. And then they then we get to hear the Dumb Blonde song. That was that was such a fun song. You don't remember that? Mm -mm. Whatever band's singing about Dumb Blondes, and they're like, they're great because uh, they're... they're they're geniuses in bed, but they're stupid. <laughs> no, so dude, great. I'm telling you, the it's copy I like... watched had terrible audio quality for the music. Really? Terrible. And I don't know if it's because it was on YouTube, so they had to distort it so it wouldn't get caught for copyright or what. But it was bad. I didn't I didn't. I recommend that watching YouTube. the Prime, uh, watching on Prime or actually getting the movie. I'm going to actually just listen to the soundtrack. How about that? Don't do that. You've, you've already... <laughs> Anyhow, the killer meets this girl at a bar... And she's like, oh, yeah. He meets her and he, he convinces her to go with him through in his Mercedes mm -hmm. to, to get some champagne. And she's like, I brought my roommate. What a smart move by her, by the way. Yeah. Well, she's so dumb, like, connecting to the Dumb Long song. Like, the movie sets the tone Segways for what to into it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the, in the Mercedes, she's talking about her roommate's nervous diarrhea and then she's talking about like TM, TA, a bunch of weird stuff, Old transcendental school. meditation. Yeah. Um, and then she's talking about writing haikus. And then she's informing the audience that haikus are Japanese poetry, which is something that I would not have known had I not watched this movie, Curtis. In the 1980s, would you? Uh, probably in the 1980s, maybe not, because we didn't have the internet then. So, I mean, you know, maybe they were trying to do some fun stuff there. Well, and not not very well, but especially letting the dumb girl do it. Right. Well, she was just kind of like very hippie, very hippish lady. Very hippie. Telling telling about her friend's uh, diarrhea though, like that was that was a cock block right there. Her roommate might have gotten lucky um, had she not done that. I don't know. I'm a little disappointed in her. <laughs> I don't so, know about uh, that. So the killer's like, you know, I don't want to be around. You got here. a modern day Jack the Ripper, and you're worried about her possibly getting hey, man, laid. Look, where you can get it, you can get it. And she is a, uh, <laughs> she, she essentially is like, ah, oh, man, I really got to go to the bathroom. Hey, and he's like, buy some wine. He's, and then her friend's like, I bet her nervous diarrhea came back. It's like, so now, and the killer's like, oh, I got some really nice cigars. Do you want to smell them? And he puts plastic oh no he's talking about his dope yeah, his dope yeah. and then we get cellophane 2.0 here there we that's go where, that's where that's where we meet cellophane because like he puts a bag on her face and then he just shoves her in a dumpster and i'm so glad she got to come back for this so best I miss, kill i miss cellophane so much best kill in the movie is after cellophane he goes in the dumpster with her body and he waits in there and he lets a little bit of her cloth outside. Two two heels. So he, he gives a, a trail, right? Yeah. Breadcrumbs. One heel, two heels, a little bit of the dress hanging outside of the, the garbage. Yeah. Uh, the dumpster. And her roommate picks, like, opens the dumpster. Like, she doesn't call anyone. She just opens the dumpster. And then you see him, like, light, him, light his lighter really quick. And then he pulls her in, like, within the same moment. If you IMDb this movie... It's the photo that they use at the beginning of the trailer. It's like the thumbnail for the trailer for New Year's Evil. You'll know that exactly face. what we're talking about. It's that face. It is so creepy. Um, and probably my favorite kill as well in this movie. We'll recap them and I'll, I'll decide then. But I thought this one was really well done. I thought it was a lot of fun. Because he had to take care of two chicks at the same time. Which for any man isn't easy. Hey -o. Hey -o. Um but what? he does a pretty good job of handling it. Why do I have a real swinger in quotation marks in my notes for this thing? He must have said something funny. I don't remember it. But man, I just watched this movie today. Probably trying to bag both chicks. Yeah. I mean, well, he, Oh, he's talking about going to the, the party because they were going to go to that big director's party or whatever. Yeah. Did he mention that guy being a real swinger? I mean, he walks into the bar like, like a total Don Swanson. 
Whatever whatever happens is that he he puts on the fake seventies porn stash. Yeah, like he he's okay. This guy is a cosplayer. He's got he's, a ton of different got, costumes. He's a master going of disguises. On. He puts on his uh, his priest's outfit next. Yep. Hits a motorcycle's car, and we're like, "Oh, great! The killer's gonna be killed by motorcyclers. Can't have that happen." So he gets away. He uh, does it's he? It's a kill? very forced chase scene. By he the way, he kills one of the bikers, if I remember correctly. Yeah. That wasn't on. Uh, was that on one of the time zones? Like, uh, was the biker? No, that was out of pure. He had to get away. Pure uh, self defense. Yeah. And yeah, the bike. He's like, "I'm a man of God, not a man of violence." And then he just stabs the dude. Uh, but then he he tries to go to the building where his where the lady. They're like, "Okay, the mo is he's building up to kill you. You're gonna die." Yes. And the police lock down the building where this kind of rock show is happening. And that's when the LAPD, they go up on stage. Right, and they... Making the announcement. If you leave, you can't come back in. Yeah, and they're booing. Like, that, that's another sign of the time. Cops against the, the rockers kind of a thing. Because they're, like, booing him. He's like, listen, I know you don't like me, blah, blah, blah. But if you leave, you can't come back in because of safety and security. Um, which really would have pissed off a lot of people. I'd kind of boo the police right now, too. Like, let's just be honest. It's a cool thing to do. Like, if I want people to like me, I gotta be mean to the police officer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's a bad joke. Uh, anyhow. It's really weird how relatable this film from 1980 is, though, in 2019. We still have oh. very similar issues that we had back then happening today. Well, it's I, just... I would say there was a lot more faith in the police um back then than there is today yeah um there's so. a lot more faith in people in general back then than there is today yeah come on people if you're listening to my podcast just my podcast wow our curtis podcast, that's a little selfish of you our podcast just love one another gosh yeah just maybe don't be a bad person and don't uh steal anyhow I feel like they've taken a lot of precaution to protect the people here at the New Year's Eve party. They they did a, they do a good job. The police do a good job once they figure out, hey, this this is a yeah. So we find out the killer the killer makes his way inside. He kills a couple police officers. Yep. You know, on his way in because of course he does. And then we find out that's that's my next note. I think what you're about to say, right? Yeah, say it. I just. <laughs> So as I'm watching it, I'm just like, oh shit, that's her husband. Dun, dun, dun. Like out loud, sitting by myself watching this movie, that was the big epiphany moment I had. I did not put those two together. So he sneaks in and then he's with his wife and he's really calm with her. Well, Der- Derek, the son, lets him in to the yeah. room and then hides him in the bathroom to surprise mom. Mom comes back. He's like, hey, mom, I got a surprise for you. And she's like, I don't have time for this right now. Someone's trying to kill me. So the kid's like, well, screw it. And he just leaves the room. So it's just her in there by herself. And then the husband comes out of the bathroom with the, um, the mask creepy on. mask on. Yeah. Which, by the way, I vividly and remember. he's got a knife. Yes. He's got everything to kill her. Right? Yeah. And then he chooses not to do it at that moment for some reason. Yeah, that, that confused me. Um, but. Because I'm pretty sure. sure he could have done it and got away with it. The only person who would have known he was in there was Derek, but... Well, he had to wait for the New Year's Eve. For, for the to time the to roll year. in, yeah, because yeah. he's, he's actually lost his marbles, which we come to find out. Because right. the cop says... Because this is when everything falls... This is when literally everything falls into place. The cops the figure elevator. it out. The elevator. Um, you know, the wife is, unfortunately, she's now pretty sure that he's going to kill her. The husband was actually a patient... At that asyn- uh, asylum that he snuck into and killed the n- nurse at originally. Really? That's where he was uh, admitted previously. Not recently, but previously. They thought he had gotten better. This is another one of those cases of someone trying to be rehabilitated. They think he's okay. He snaps okay. and loses more, it. More sanatorium. Another free... Oh, my God. Uh, there's always connections to be made, but... Oh, that's awesome. There's always... Gonna, yeah. No, Definitely. And, well, this killer he, knows way too much he about... He doesn't let her know until the elevator falls. He's like, you're yes. a trooper. And then he's, she's like slowly realizing it's him. But but he knows way too much about how elevators work, man. Well, no. He, he was prepared. Definitely. Like, he, he was ready. And what he says is, I'm going to be with my son on New Year's Eve. 
and we're going to let you sleep in. And then he's trying to kill her in the elevator, and the police come in, and they, they, he's like, I guess Midnight didn't start the day of his new life. Because he uh, gets chased by the police to the top of the building. Yeah. And they're like, don't think it. Don't do anything. He jumps off. And that's the end of evil. That is the end of evil. But until, that's not the end of the movie. Until the son takes the mask off. Like, and I was like, well, how does the son know that's his dad? What the, what the hell? Is, and he picks him up, he hugs him, takes the mask, and he leaves. And then they show them... So he knew it was the mask because he's the one who put him in the bathroom. Right. And he, the dad probably had the mask. Well, I, I think he knew for other reasons. I think this was planned between the two of them. Yes! Because uh, it shows him, at the end, driving the ambulance, yep. wearing the mask. Yep. So... That's what I was trying to allude to earlier, that we couldn't piece together because we wanted you to follow along on the yeah. ride as listeners. But I think Derek killed Yvonne. I think it was him. I think it was was her husband because he says it was him, and he okay. tells her why. But maybe he did have the son do it. I, I think can't. he had the son do it, because how would he have been at the sanitarium and there? I mean, if you want to make the movie logically make sense, you can argue, you can argue that. I, don't I mean, it works either way, I guess. I don't yeah. think they planned that far ahead in okay. the making of this film. Definitely some plot holes there, then. I well, The movie itself was kind of good-ish. Yeah. But badish. All I know is my last note was yes, I wasn't wrong completely. The kid was involved. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna say like there's something in common between these two movies is the acting wasn't too great, but the movies themselves like the the pacing, the editing, the direction that was good, that was solid. Yeah, so, I, I I think these movies, um, you know, to that point, the acting wasn't subpar, but it didn't drag the movies down at all. The movies held up for other reasons. The writing, directing, it's creative. the way it was edited. Um, even the music was really solid throughout. The kills were good. Let's recap the kills real quick because we didn't. Uh, I don't think we gave them all enough love. Basically, Yvonne dies first. Shower curtain. Nurse gets stabbed. Uh, chick from the bar. She gets cellophaned. Then the friend of said girl gets killed in the dumpster. The biker gang leader gets a machete to the side. The girl from the drive-in, the one that was in the car with him, did she survive when he stole the car? He didn't even mention that, so he steals a car and he drives off. No, yeah. she... I don't remember if he kills her, because he has to bail. I don't think he kills her. I okay. think he kills her, actually. I don't remember how, but... Like... And then he kills himself by jumping off the roof. Yeah. And then the emergency vehicle driver was killed by Derek. So, Derek's definitely killed. We know that. He killed the driver. Did they show a dead driver? Yeah, they show him laying on the ground, throat slit. I didn't see that. There you go. With a box cutter. I think Given to him by a Santa Claus. There is a sequel to this movie. Uh, the thir- I, Apparently, the third one is a huge, bad, like, popular bad movie. Let's just say we're looking for a lot of New Year's movies for next year. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, there there is <laughs> oh, a sequel. shit, yeah, man. <laughs> well, Gremlins 2 is a New Year's Eve movie. Which it is. I think we're probably going to have to do next year. I mean, but... it's directly correlated after Gremlins, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. New Year's Eve film. Um, well, these were these were both really good movies. Um, I think it's, it's really telling and a good way to end the year and the season. So this is going to be probably the last episode of season one. Um... Any any thoughts or words of wisdom from you, Clark, for this new year? No, it's been a lot of fun doing this with you. Thank you for uh, having me on board. Um, for those of you who don't know, Curtis uh, is the main heart and mind between this. I'm just a I'm just a deep voice. Uh, I yeah. Thanks for for listening to us. We really appreciate it. Uh, you can reach out to us at uh, via email if you want to. It's two guys and some horror at gmail.com. Also reach out to us via our, our uh, social media. Two guys, letter two, or number two, <laughs> letter two. Okay, so the number two, guys, horror pod. And that works for both uh, Instagram as well as Twitter. So if you have any feedback for us, if you have any suggestions, or even if you yourself would like to be a guest on our show, feel free to give us a holler. We'd love to hear your opinions and any helpful feedback. Well said, Clark. Well said, and uh, happy New Year, guys. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. We're we're just getting started. We're brainstorming season two. We're gonna, we're probably gonna have a trailer up here in a little bit to kind of help you guys get to know us better. 
um, and then also kind of explain where we're moving with the podcast. Um, we're changing the format a little bit. We're going to create some fun segments, hopefully, um, that you guys will enjoy. So uh, be on the lookout. Be- we-, we love you and appreciate all your listens. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do we want to announce that to our plebs, to the uh, the plebeians who? I'm just joking. Uh, by the way, record uh, post that at the end. Should we let the plebs know the people who listen to us? All you're right. all plebs. You're all plebeians. Ple- and I'm being completely serious when I say that. I'm definitely not joking around.